Hello. I'm uh, back to uh, talk more about midi chlorines. Um, basically, uh, you know, I kind of fumbled and um, wasn't really able to talk when giving or reading that uh, blog post about midi chlorines, but. And I'll leave a link to that uh, particular uh, video in, uh, uh, in the description. Or, um, those things where it kind of goes up on top, and then you can click it. I forget what those are called at the moment, but it'll come to me later. Anyway, um, I just wanted to kind of reiterate that uh, it's just interesting how people thought that the midichlorines ruined the force. It's no longer this mystical semi-religious esque entity that when one connects to it uh, you know it's no longer that because it's a biological thing as well which why wouldn't it be really bi biological um, how else are people beings able to use the force midichlorines just help give a little more context as to how that is and Perhaps people didn't really want that. Um, yeah, that's fine. In a way, I guess, perhaps understandable. In that, you know, it's a bit more still mysterious, yet I see no problem with midichlorians at all. Um, it's just fascinating how people just reacted to that, how they jumped all over. It's the force is ruined, as well as George Lucas still ruined Star Wars. Did this and that, and it's just awful. And blah blah blah. It's very, uh, it's very. I don't know. Interesting is a word. I can also say odd. I mean, again. Back in the 70s, George Lucas had midichlorians down in his notebook, essentially, because I'm pretty sure he would have, because in 77 he gave an interview that was in a, published in like a magazine or something, where he talked about midichlorians. He talked about midichlorians is the reason uh, the Force is really able to be used because they have midichlorians in them and there's just thing you know, I'm sure as the movies went on in particular with the prequels he built a pawn off of that and um, essentially that's why the Skywalker bloodline for instance is Anakin's kids are able to use the force or have that ability to perhaps use if trained and are able to understand and use uh, this gift, use this power, so to speak, that they have and possess. That's why Luke is able to use the Force, and yet Han can't. I gave that as a, I believe that's an example at the end of my video last time, but that was like 20. Two twenty-three minutes long. It was like at the last five minutes or so, five six minutes, and yeah, he Luke is able to use it because while they all he Han and Chewie all have you know, midichlorians, Luke's account is higher. His meets the level requ the count required to. Uh, you know, be force sensitive 
and I'm pretty sure it's probably higher than that as well, you know, because the str I'm sure the higher the the count, the more sensitive and the better you're going to be able to use the force when trained. And um, and while Luke just learned some basic stuff in the original film, uh, he seemed to be picking up fairly quickly within a day or two after using the force because the movie kind of takes place within like three days perhaps four you could even say if you really wanted to kind of uh, stretch it but that could be <clears throat> a little much it's like about three days or so and uh Within the time of him learning about the Force and then trusting his feelings and letting the Force kind of connect to him in a way, he's able to like deflect the little bolts that that, uh, that remote is shooting at him, and he's able to eventually block uh, block the blasts with his lightsaber. And then at the end of the movie, obviously, we know he's able to trust the Force and use it, and he's able to shoot the missiles going that goes into the reactor to the Death Star, down that port, and then it blows up. Because, I mean, I saw a video that about how it's fairly impossible, it'd be impossible for anything to do that, like that, or like that to happen. Because, you know, it's blowing a lot of hot air. So, if anything, it should have gone up in the air. Not air, because it's space, there's no air. But it should have just flown up, or perhaps kept going, but... It would, like... When it would hit, go towards the uh, exhaust port, it would just kind of maybe move up a little bit. Uh, because Luke was using the force and was trusting his feelings on that, he was able to, you know, make the missiles go in. And, uh, yeah, all that does is just give more context to the force and how people and beings are able to use the force. Does not take away the religious and mystical aspects of the Force. And, um, yeah. I kind of found that a bit interesting, to say the least, when I mean, people were going on about that. Um, again, that was a kind of a big, long example with uh, the Force of the story and how Luke uses the Force, but again, that's just is to illustrate how he's able to have the force because uh, Anakin ha had the force and Leia does too though we've never really seen her ever use the force until the force awakens or not the force awakens the last Jedi but we have no idea if she's ever trained under Luke like we don't know if he's ever given her any kind of training tips so when she's floating from space and all that looks so awkward and weird and odd it doesn't really make sense because we never got any clue in the end any indication in the previous film or in this new film that she had any training at all for all we know she never did any training which is not a bad thing but then when you have things like that happen you wonder and you're curious and there's no explanation Will episode 9 have explanation? I don't know. It would be nice, but at the same time, you it's a bit late. It's a bit too late, and I, I myself probably won't really care about said explanation. But that could be me, and also, maybe I will care. Maybe they'll be able to explain it in a way that makes that is both interesting and makes sense. But this whole midi chlorine thing ruining the force and all of this, it's just... It's just nonsense.
Uh, anyway, uh, that's really all I wanted to say. It's a lot shorter. This video is a lot shorter <laughs> than the last one. And uh, yeah, I believe I've made my case and my point. And that's really it. So, until uh, next time. Peace out, and I'll see you later.